Propaganda. Many use the word when talking about countries like North Korea, Kazakhstan, Iran. Countries viewed as authoritarian through the lens of the Western media. Press freedom, freedom of thought. People use those terms when talking about countries like the United States, France, Australia, democracies. In 1988, Noam Chomsky co-authored a book with Edward Herman called Manufacturing Consent. It blasted apart the notion that media acts as a check on political power, that media inform the public, serve the public, so that we can better engage in the political process. In fact, media manufacture our consent. They tell us what those in power need them to tell us so we can fall in line. Democracy is staged with the help of media that work as propaganda machines. Media operate through five filters. The first has to do with ownership. Mass media firms are big corporations. Often they're part of even bigger conglomerates. Their end game, profit. And so it's in their interest to push for whatever guarantees that profit. Critical journalism takes second place to the needs and interests of the corporation. Rupert Murdoch. Okay, right. Yeah, he recently, <laughs> he recently just um, wanted, made a bid to buy Time Warner, mm -hmm. right? Which is his last main competitor, right? Because he already owns a lot. He yep. owns. There's five guys who own all the media, and I know that because they had to explain to me when I was on mushrooms, and I can understand it. <laughs> so uh, Rupert Murdoch, he owns. You ready? What he owns? He owns the Wall Street Journal, News Corp, 20th Century Fox, Direct TV, Sky TV, Fox News, the New York Post, the Chicago Sun Times, the Village Voice. How did that happen? The Village Voice CEO, the Boston Herald, London Sunday Times, most of the TV in Europe, Asia, and Australia. So you get the point, right? But if you didn't get the point, I could list TV Guide, The Sun, five more British national papers, most of England satellite TV. Oh, and yeah, he bought the Dow Jones, which I didn't even know you could fucking do that. <laughs> I'm not sure I knew that. I just, I just picture him <laughs> sitting in his office on his dolphin skin chair, stroking a Persian cat with a diamond studded collar. And then he pushes a button that burns a barrel of oil just for kicks. <laughs> That's how I envision. And people go, well, how does it affect me if Rupert Murdoch owns all this media? And I'll say, well, let's say your country wanted to invade another country that had a lot of oil. Well, they couldn't just say that. So they had to concoct a story Mm, we got to get somebody to sell the story. Bingo. How about the guy who owns most of the media in the United States, England, and Australia? Coincidence, those are the three countries that invaded Iraq with us, son of a bitch. So now you're sitting at home with no health care, your house is underwater, and your kid's at a shitty school because we're firing teachers, and your government says they don't have any money to help you because $3 trillion is sitting in a hole in Iraq, which Rupert Murdoch helped start, and that's how it affects you. Wow. Second filter exposes the real role of advertising. Media costs a lot more than consumers will ever pay. So who fills the gap? Advertisers. And what are the advertisers paying for? Audiences. And so it isn't so much that the media are selling you a product, their output. They're also selling advertisers a product. You. How does the establishment manage the media? That's the third filter. Yee. Journalism cannot be a check on power because the very system encourages complicity. Yee. Governments, corporations, big institutions know how to play the media game. They know how to influence the news narrative. They feed media scoops, official accounts, interviews with the experts. 
They make themselves crucial to the process of journalism. So those in power and those who report on them are in bed with each other. If you want to challenge power, you'll be pushed to the margins. Your name won't be down. You won't be getting in. You've lost your access. You've lost the story. When the media, journalists, whistleblowers, sources, stray away from the consensus, they get flat. That's the fourth filter. When the story is inconvenient for the powers that be, you'll see the flat machine in action, discrediting sources, trashing stories, and diverting the conversation. And Murdoch absolutely wanted the war. There's no question absolutely. about that. And he got right. it. Yeah, and he's on the record. He's a massively pro uh, Iraq War, and uh, and we got it. And Fox News, the whole and, it, and there's the famous story that Fox News is waving the flag before the war, mm -hmm. and then MSNBC panics, and they start waving the flag, and they fired their top talk show host Phil Donahue. Phil Donahue, right? Because they said he had the best ratings at the time, but they fired him because he had bad ratings. <laughs> That's what they said. That's what they said. Yeah. But in reality, then we found an, uh, an internal memo. memo, and they said we can't have him on the network. When we're about to go to war, and we need to be waving the flag, right. okay? And they also got rid of Ashley Banfield and Jesse Ventura. All had contracts with MSNBC, right. all taken off the air, okay? Because they were all critical of the Iraq War. And then all of a sudden, hey, you have just enough popularity uh, to push into the war, right? And by the way, uh, when we went into war, 69% of the country thought that Saddam Hussein was personally responsible for 9/11. <laughs> To manufacture consent, you need an enemy, a target. That common enemy is the fifth filter. Communism, wow. terrorists, wow. immigrants. Whoa. A common enemy, a boogeyman to fear, helps corral public opinion. Five filters, one big media theory. Consent is being manufactured all around you, all the time. Huh? So that's what I don't like about the news, right? And they're bought and paid for. And the biggest news story of the last decade was the Iraq War. Brian Williams invited on military generals to tell us the straight dope about the Iraq War and what was really happening, right? Yep. Turns out those military con generals were being paid by defense contractors. Brian Williams never let us know that. That's kind of important. When that story broke that those people were on the take from defense contractors, Brian Williams never addressed it on his news. So we got bullshitted about the biggest story of the decade by the number one news guy, and nobody has a problem. And by the way, NBC is a bank, and they're a defense contractor because they're owned by General Electric. And my question to Brian Williams is, and which I ask in the book, how many checks during a war, how many checks do you take from a defense contractor before you stop calling yourself a journalist? The corporate state was never threatened by the liberal class's myopic preoccupation with multiculturalism and diversity. This was anti-politics masquerading as politics. The culture wars did not challenge imperialism, neoliberalism, and globalization. The dictates of the market the primacy of corporate profit and the military industrial complex remain sacrosanct and unchallenged. Liberals, especially academics, engaged in the culture wars within a neoliberal framework. Feminism, for example, became about placing individual women in positions of power, not about empowering poor, marginalized, and oppressed women. Post-racial America became about a black president who, as Cornel West says, serves as a black mascot for Wall Street. The preoccupation with cultural diversity, as Russell Jacoby writes, was nothing more than a call to include a broader spectrum of people within neoliberal elites. It was about patronage, not revolution. These institutions betrayed themselves, and they betrayed us.